Giving a test to a group of students, the grades and genders are summarized in the table below. If one student is chosen, is chosen at random, find the probability that the student got a B. So recall that the probability of an event occurring can be thought of as the number of outcomes corresponding to the event divided by the number of equally likely outcomes. Okay, so what does this mean and how do we apply this to our problem? Well, we wanna know the probability that the student got a B. So the probability of us achieving a B is equal to the number of ways or the number of outcomes corresponding to B, meaning we want to know how many students or the number of students that got or obtained B. So let's check out. In our chart, if we look at the number of students who got a B, notice we have 18 males and 12 females, so we have a total of 30 students that achieved a B. So numerator for this probability would be 30. Now we have to divide by the equally likely outcomes and so our number of equally likely outcomes just means our number of students because we're equally likely to select any of the random students. And the total number of students is this right here in the corner which is 86 students. 53 and 33 male and female, or if we like 24 plus 30 plus 32. So we have a total of 86 students. That means our probability that the student got a B is simply 30 over 86, or 15, 15 divided by 43. And so that's the probability that goes in the first box the probability that the student got a B, which is 15 out of 43. So moving on, let's go on to the next part. So let me erase and let's go on to the next part. Find the probability that the student was male and got a C. So this time, the key word here is and, and so what I'm gonna be talking about is I want the probability that the student was a male and, which means intersect with the set of the students that got a C. What this means is that this student that I'm choosing had to both be a male and had to have received a C. And means intersection, so they have to be in both of those categories. So how many different students are male and at the same time also received a C? Well, that would be under the male row and the C column. There are 19 males who also received a C. So my numerator would be 19 and then divided by, and then the total possible students again is just like before, there are 86 total students to choose from. And so my probability that the student was male and got a C is simply 19 divided by 86, and that doesn't reduce. So let's move on and get to the next problem. This time we're asked to find the probability that the student was male or got a B. Or in math means union. So this time we're looking for the probability that the student was a male or got a B. In other words, the student that we're selecting can either be a male student or it can be a student that received a B. So this is a larger set. Looking at our union, we go up and we say, okay, let me erase, get rid of those marks, and let's focus now on getting a male or a B. So either male or got a B. So let's start by getting all the males. So notice there are three places that we have males involved. All of those together give me a, com a total of 53. So I know that there's gonna be 53 males, 
But when I'm talking about the probability that the student I'm picking is a male or got a B, that means I also have to include all the students that got Bs. So I'm also going to include the students that got Bs. So that would be 18 and 12. Okay, so those two students also got a B. Now, there's a couple ways we can do it. We can either use that rule, the, which is like our cardinality rule for sets, where you add up the two and subtract the intersection, or you can simply say to yourself, okay, right now I have circled all of the places where I have a student who was either male or received a B. And if I add up those four numbers, if I take 16 and add it to 18 and add it to 19 and add it to 12, that's going to give me my total. What's that? 30, 40, 50, 65? So it looks like my numerator is going to be 65 total students divided by the number of possible students I can choose from, which again is 86. Again, I don't think this fraction is reducible, and so we would say that the probability that the student we select was either male or received a B is 65 out of 86. So now let's take care of that very last problem. The very last problem says, if one student is chosen at random, find the probability that the student got a C given they are female. This is called a conditional probability. And it's a conditional probability because we have this extra condition put at the end. And when you have a conditional probability, it's going to change, nine times out of 10, it's going to change your denominator. So we wanna know what the probability is that the student got a C given they are female. So let me write down, probability of a C given female. This is how we write it. Probability of C given female. What that means is that the number of possible equally likely students that I'm selecting from is given to be a female. So that tells me right away that the denominator for this particular probability has to be my number of females which is going to be 33. I'm told that I'm given that my student is a female. So I'm restricting my set of possible students. All right, now based on that, now what is the probability that you have a C given you're in the female category? So given that we're right here in the female category, now, what is the probability that that student who was a female received a C? And there's only one, excuse me, there's only one little place right here where that's going to occur. These students here who are female are the ones who received a C. And so the number of C's, given that they were female, happens to be 13. There are 13 students who are female who received a C.